Hi everyone, Saskia here from Los Angeles Guinea Pig Rescue and today I want to take you along uh, and meet <laughs> my emergency kit, all well, the things that I use. So um, mine is probably a little more elaborate than uh, most people's and I would like to share because a lot of people ask me about it, say, you know, what is your emergency kit, what does it look like, what do you have in it and I thought, you know what, let's just do it, let me just bring everything out pretty much everything I use on an almost daily basis and I'm going to share with you guys and then you can just see if there's anything any tips you you can pick up from it or you think maybe would that be good to have uh, by all means I'm, I'm not gonna say that, that this is what everyone should have but you just you can kind of pick and choose and see what what you think would be you know good for you so also you have this uh, supply list on the website right Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. I have a list, if you go to the website, laguineapigrescue.com, you'll click on supply list, or supplies, I think, and I kind of created a whole list of most of the things that you see here that, um, uh, you know, from Amazon, so it's easy. You can just click on it and, and buy it, and also we actually, the guinea pigs get like a little, little tiny percentage of, of that sale as well, so all good stuff. All righty, well, let's see. I, I don't even know where to start. Shall we start with... And you know, I'm, I'm not going to go into full detail about everything because that would actually take way too long. Um, because every, there's a, there is like a whole, not just the treatment, but you know, the ailment behind it. How do they get it? How do you get, I mean, there's like a half hour on each item pretty much. So I'm just going to skim over it and just show you the things that I use and then briefly explain what I use it for. Okay, well, you know what? Why don't we start here? Look at these things here. What's over here? What's okay. this big thing down here? This, this one? Oh, okay. Actually, Oopsie. the big thing down here. That's the scale. So this is really important. I, we like to weigh the pigs when they come in so that we can see if they're losing weight or they're gaining weight, and it's just a really good tool. Uh, we recommend that you also you know, weigh your piggies regularly as well. Um, some people get a little obsessed with it, obsessive with it, and they weigh them every other day. And you know, if you just weigh them once every two weeks, it should be plenty. Of once a month, really. Um, so it's really good. We I, I collect the information in grams, so not in a pound. And some it's uh, usually with guinea pigs, we always do the grams. Okay. Um, what else? Oh, this is a scissor. I'm just gonna jump back and forth. Okay. I like these, it's a little dirty, but these I use for the long hair guinea pigs, especially in the summer. It is a hair thinner, and I'm not going to demonstrate it on my hair, because <laughs> uh, my hair is thin enough. Um, but if you have like Peruvians with really thick hair, this is awesome, because you just literally just go like that, and you just cut into the hair, and if you then gently brush it out, you'll see a whole bunch of hair come out. So you thinned it out, rather than taking more of the length. So first you want to trim them nicely and then start thinning it out. So That's what would you one. call that if you go on Amazon? What was that you know, called? Like hair? Thinning scissors. Thinning maybe. scissors. Yeah, okay. probably. All right. Love this. This is awesome. This is a brand, a lovely supporter uh, sent me because I couldn't find my, my, my uh, shaver the other day. Um, and this is awesome. I love this one. But there's many, many good ones on the market. And I use this for you know just about everything I just did a, a Peruvian guinea pig with super matted hair this weekend and I, I you know painlessly got got rid of all that excess matted hair and stuff um, whenever I need to look at an area a little closer there's a little puncture or something I can just shave it all uh, off all the hair around it and that really helps me see much better what's going on so these are always good um, this is actually a suture remover stitch remover removal this is a special little thing where you just put the stitch and then you click and it goes out without pulling on the guinea pig or pulling on the on the area as well. So this is, you know, not for everyone. You don't need this, but uh, we do quite a bit surgery. So in that way I can take out the stitches myself rather than having to go back to the vet. Um, okay, next tool. These are for the mouth. So this is allows me to look into the guinea pig's mouth to the molars in the back. So one goes on the front teeth like this, the front teeth go here, and then the other one you kind of put in here, this, the, you kind of open the, the, the cheeks like that, and then you can kind of see better into the mouth. Then you still need 
light is really important as well so that you can see now this is super not easy to do because even the process of getting this on a piggy is is just oh, it's horrible they will find a way with those little paws to get it out even if you wrap them up they'll still get those little paws out it's amazing so this is a saskia emergency kit only kind of item yeah but you know some people are comfortable with doing it or at least checking it and and then yeah it's definitely good to have absolutely okay okay so the next thing this is also a teeth this is a bone wringer and i use this for front teeth a bone what wronger wringer r-o-n-g-u-e-r wronger or e u anyway that's what this is and i've done quite a few videos actually where i'm kind of trimming an upper incisor mm. that's like grown too long or uneven or just you know one um you know there's two parts to the incisors right where one is super long and the other one is kind of not isn't there so you have to trim it um, these are awesome I love these so you can look for the videos as well okay this is actually a cuticle cutter but I will use this for those um, little spurs that that guinea pigs get mm -hmm. or along their little feet it's uh, the callus that, that you'll see it when they get a certain age actually you know around about two and a half you probably can start seeing it with your pinkies and you just snip it off with this much easier than if you do it with the tweezer man i recommend no other brand than this one because in this case a nail clipper is not just a nail clipper a nail clipper is a nail clipper this is the nail clipper I love this brand, Tweezerman. It's really super good. And then don't use the small one. Make sure you got the big toenail clipper. That's an awesome tool for doing the teeth. Uh, the nails. <laughs> um, back to teeth. Back to teeth. Now this, I'm not sure what it's called, to be honest. I'm sure someone can figure it out and leave a comment on it. This is what we use once you can see the guinea pig's teeth. Like this, you got the tools in, right? And then you're looking in the mouth. You can actually use this tool to trim off any hard edges. Now, this is definitely something I do not recommend anyone trying this or doing it because it's it's no it's no it's no joke to do it. It's not fun for the guinea pig. It's especially if they're a little stressed out already. And I mean, I personally don't like doing this, and I will only do it if I really, really have to, and it's a super emergency because it's extremely stressful on an animal that's probably already stressed uh, from not eating enough because the overgrown teeth. And that's the only reason you would ever use it is for overgrown molars. Um, there, now apparently the uh, KB Trust, the Cambridge KB Trust, they do it without anesthetic all the time and they use exactly this method. So um, I'm hoping to go there maybe soon and, 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 and learn how they do it because I'd love to see it because it's really tough. Right here in the States, we, they always do um, an, an, a, you know, anesthesia, unfortunately, which is not the best for guinea pigs. This tool is wonderful. I love it. This one I use a lot for all kinds of things, mainly taking out food from the top and the bottom teeth. You can get older guinea pigs, specifically older ones. You always want to check. They can get food stuck in the gum line on the top and at the bottom as well. So you really got to lift up that lip and look all the way up in the root and all the way down in that root as well. And then you can just kind of, you know, gently ease it out. I also use this, this part to kind of ease it out like that rather than, you know, that the, the pointy part. And that's a dental pick, right? It, yes, dental pick, exactly. Okay. okay, this one I have here to show that this one is not really good. I don't like it. Um, someone suggested it was good for something, and I forget now. Oh, maybe those little spurs on the side, maybe, it might be good for. But generally speaking, I don't like these. And I don't recommend you using them. Syringes. Mm, I got syringes. loads of different kinds of syringes, and I love these syringes. I use these so much. I have a three milliliter syringe and a one milliliter syringe. And this is a big dental curved syringe for flushing out uh, areas. So this is, I use this for flushing out abscesses or um, you know, if I want to have a better look in the mouth, I can kind of use this as well to kind of flush some uh, food away and stuff. And Do you also use that to feed critical care sometimes? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yes, the thank you. We cut off the top and then we'll, we'll put critical care in here and, and, and feed it like that. 
you definitely want to make sure that this is uh, nice and soft so you kind of want to uh, make sure it's not hard so if you put it in their mouth it's not going to hurt them uh, this is for medication primarily and these are a one use um, you can use it more times if you just have one guinea pig you're medicating but we have so many so we, we don't reuse them we just throw them away that's what we also uh, use for giving vitamin c right Yes, exactly, vitamin C, yeah, all kinds of stuff, really, a little extra water and stuff, it's perfect. And this is just a bigger version of it. You can also use, some people use these as well for um, syringe feeding as well. So, wow, I said it was going to be quick, but this is going to be a long one. All right, so let's move on to, what do we got? Milk thistle. Milk thistle. What do you use that for? That is to support liver function in guinea pigs that are emaciated or haven't eaten well for a while. Um, it's very important because they can really get uh, fatty uh, liver disease and that comes from not eating um, and that's what happens when they have teeth issues. They usually are become very skinny, very emaciated and this is a wonderful supportive uh, medicine it's not you can buy this it's just, this is not rx you can just buy this on amazon as well poor loop vet ointment this is just like uh, artificial tears this is great if you have a guinea pig that has an eye injury or can't close its eye and has a dry eye then we use this is really wonderful for that and this is kind of the same stuff as well it's also nice lubricant for the eyes just like eye drops, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And then, you know, while we're on the subject of that, here, this one, I use just to rinse out an eye. This is just saline, really, is all it is. And uh, it's just really wonderful when, when you really need to see in the eye and it's kind of goopy or there's some stuff in there, you can just kind of rinse it out with, with the saline. And do we have any more eye stuff? Yes, we do. They tend to get lots of eye issues, unfortunately. Teramycin, this is wonderful stuff. And you can actually buy this uh, over the counter. Uh, Amazon has it. So you don't have to go to the vet to get it. And it's, it's antibiotic. So I'm it's pretty really sure good. it's also on our supply list. I've yeah, seen that it on is. There. It is. And it's also on the supply list. It's also on our wish list. We use quite a bit of it. Um, Neosporin. We use it just like you would with people. If they have a little cut or a scrape or something, we just use a little neosporin on it. And this is Doctarin, Doctarin Oral Gel. This stuff you cannot really buy here. I used to get it on eBay, and I had to have a supporter in Thailand specifically find this and, and um, you know send it up for us. What do you use that for? This is for mouth thrush. Oh. And you just kind of take a Q-tip and you kind of move it around in the mouth. And uh, again, I can't find it. It's just so odd why it is just not, can't find it. Anyway, it's, um, yeah, it's an antifungal because that's what thrush is, right? It's an overgrowth of, of yeast and fungus in the mouth that actually is caused most of the time by food stuck in the bottom or the top of the gum line. So when you see kind of white stuff in your guinea pig's mouth, because that's how it presents, or crusts around the lips, because those crusts are often also caused by the uh, residue food that gets stuck. Fungal cream, this is ringworm cream that we people use. It's exactly the same for like athlete's foot, and this is what we use for ringworm and guinea pigs which is super, super common. I think this weekend alone, we had, gosh, I don't know, maybe four people come. And, and we have several here right now. And we have several here that also came with, uh, with, with ringworms. So we, we go through tons of this stuff. It's really good. Um, on the website as well, um, is we well, find one of the videos as well about ringworm treatment. And you can see the whole outline uh, treatment plan that is all over the counter and you don't need to go to the vet for that. Super easy to heal. Okay, Little Remedies Guest Relief Drops. Now, this is an interesting one. Um, and the reason is, we don't ever have guinea pigs with bloat. Honestly, it's the weirdest thing because I hear people talk about it all the time. Bloat, bloat, bloat. And you know, I can't remember the last time we had a guinea pig with bloat. 
Honestly, I don't, and it's just odd because everybody always talks about it, and the vet always diagnoses it, and I just never come across it. It's the weirdest thing, right? The last time I saw it was a mitrisket. He kind of blew up, and his whole tummy was like really round and 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 swollen like that. And a couple hours later, it was gone. And that's the only time really I've seen it. But I have this just in case. If I were to see something like that again, then obviously I'm gonna try some of the gas relief drops. Okay, CBD, oh my goodness. What do I do without this one? This is amazing. I did another video on this as well about the use of CBD in guinea pigs and if it is, um, you know, how well it works, etc. What you use it for, arthritis in guinea pigs, animals that are generally just not feeling really good, etc. Um, it's like a pick-me-up, it's really amazing. And it makes them walk again. When they have arthritis, it makes them walk again, honestly. Again, I have a video on that as well. It's before and after CBD application, you, you'll see. You'll see, it's amazing, miracle. Okie dokie, Manuka honey, medical grade Manuka honey. This we use for bumblefoot. So we have bumblefoot guinea pigs that come in. The bumblefoot is like where the pad, this whole area is all kind of infected and and like usually it's a scab that's grown. Oh, I mean, it's bad. And the paw can sometimes swell up to this size. Um, and we put this uh, on the bandage when we wrap up the foot. You, you wanna, um, you know what's missing? I just realized, Epsom salt, bumblefoot. You wanna soak it in Epsom salt first and you know, clean it off real good with a little betadine. Betadine water, just make it so it's the color of like tea. Um, and uh, after you've done that, disinfected it, you dry it off, and then you put some of this stuff on. It's really, really awesome on the wound. It's like a natural, a natural antibiotic. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. In fact, people interested in seeing how we healed, uh, su successfully healed bumblefoot, you can go to our website, and if you scroll down a little bit, you will see uh, a picture, three pictures of a guinea pig's little paw, from paw, and it's Julius, that was his name. And click on that and you'll see how we did it, what we used for it, the whole explanation is there. This is wonderful stuff. This is just cotton, cotton padding. So we use that with this. Crinkle, crinkle. I'm sorry, I feel bad. Okay, um, when they come in with uh, terrible ringworm or terrible mites and they're super itchy all over and they just scratch so much you want to bandage them up, and this is what we use for that. Actually, if you want to watch a video on how you did that, I believe you did that to nails, yes, right? Our nails top. video, yeah, the severe mange. From, from, from scratching and then at the same time, because what happens is they, they go into a seizure. If they're allowed to scratch, it just becomes so much that they just start seizuring, and that in turn can actually cause their death because the heart stops and they kind of stay in the seizure. And the way to prevent that is to wrap them up. If they can't scratch, they're not gonna seizure. That's a really important thing to know. Okay, so yeah, we will just wrap them up with this stuff all around, and then we'll put a little vet wrap over, over it as well. Not too tight, of course. And also, if there are some open sores and stuff, and I, I don't know if I can find it, but I use a non-stick pad, which obviously is not like this, because this would stick on any sore or any wound, right? It would just dry up and it's hard to take it off. But um, the non-stick pad would be great, because it doesn't stick, That's hence the name. Okay, this one. Balmex Diaper Rash Cream. What on earth would you be using this for, right? If you have a guinea pig, and it's usually the females that are leaky, have like um, urinary tract infection where they can get really, you know, wet at the, at the bottom, and they get um, like a urine rash, and the hair kind of is not growing there very well, and it's all kind of red and inflamed. You want to put this on, clean it first. Put this because this creates a barrier against the liquid. Just as it does with babies, same thing, so. Okay, that's that one. Uh, Benadryl, children's Benadryl, super important. 
This we use a lot when they come in with, again, with the itchies, like uh, the ringworm or the mites, and it's really advanced. Then we use this because it helps them with the itching or not scratch as much. So very important too. It's all important actually. I keep saying very important, but it's all it's all important. Charcoal. What do we use this for? Now this is interesting because I will use this with guinea pigs that have a soft stool that we can't seem to clear up and something is just not right. Um, and I'll just take one of these capsules. And it's literally charcoal. It's great stuff. I'll take one of the capsules and I just break it up, put it all in a little glass or something, and then I make six portions out of one capsule. That so makes you make sense. the liquid version of the charcoal. Yes. I put a little bit of water and then I make six portions out of one, and then you want to give it to the guinea pig two, three times a day. For how and long? Three days or so, okay. and then you should really see a difference. Um, this is actually from coconut shells, it's interesting, but what this does, it kind of absorbs the toxins and then, you know, eliminates it the natural way. Because it helps with people, same thing actually. Ivermectin. This is the Ivermectin 1% sterile solution, which is an injectable, and we don't inject it, and the vet never has to inject it either, but they always do, unfortunately, and it's painful for a guinea pig to inject anything. It's, it's painful. Uh, drop on the ear. That's all, all it does, all it takes, uh, as a preventative and as a treatment as well, actually. Um, it comes in many different boxes and and brands but this is all the same stuff because the ingredient is ivermectin so one percent what kind of syringe do you use to apply the one drop just this little guy and you just you know gosh let me see one drop that's a drop that's an adult guinea pig and if you have a younger guinea pig or a smaller pig you do a little bit less than that so on the ear as well, sorry, that's an important one. On the ear, you can also t uh, use a horse wormer paste. And again, I have that, um, <clears throat> I think on the website as well. A uh, horse wormer paste that contains ivermectin. <clears throat> and you just put a little pea-sized amount in their mouth. So that's that. Vix vapor up. If you have a guinea pig that is very, that has a really bad upper respiratory infection, is like all snotty and you can hear it's having a hard time breathing, you can just put a teeny little bit amount of Vicks just right here in the lips, right here above the, you know, underneath the nostril, just right here, little teeny bit. Uh, and that will help a little bit with, you know, breathing better, just like it does with us. Styptic powder. Uh, styptic powder, we use that when we make a mistake cutting nails, and that happens, you know, I, I do it too, it happens, uh, even though I do so many, but still I make a mistake every now and then, so this stuff uh, stops the bleeding, you can use it for your dogs as well, uh, you know, dog groomers always have this in the buckets of it, because they also make mistakes, so this is good to have. Vitamin C, which is just wonderful. I love using it for when I do medication. Sometimes it doesn't taste very good, so I'll just give them a little bit of the vitamin C with the medication. Um, the other thing is when an animal is sick, just not thriving, not eating right, you always want to do the vitamin C. We do not give a, vi a daily vitamin C supplement. We don't. We only do it when they're sick or just you know, not feeling good, something's wrong, that's when we, uh, so, um, you know, supplement the vitamin C. But if they're eating fine, eating normally, then you should be fine with just a regular diet, a high vitamin C And we C just diet. do like about 0.1 mLs on that, right? You, or yeah, one ml, actually, I'm sorry, one yes, ml. A whole syringe like a this. Whole, a whole one ml. Daily. Yeah. Okay. You can break it up in two, you know, that's fine too. Um, and you know what? They love this stuff though. So I'll give it to my boys just because they, they love the taste. It's like a treat for them. Um, this is the SAR X, which is Sherwood. That's the company that makes it. It is their version of the Oxbow Critical Care. And I've switched over to this one completely. Don't want to use that one anymore. Look at this one only. This one, it's just wonderful stuff. It's got everything you need. It doesn't have the fillers that the 
that the Oxbow has. It, this one has tons of fillers, which the you know, soybean and more soybean I see here, uh, you know, molasses, all kinds of stuff that, that is not necessarily the healthiest. So this, and they seem to like this, this flavor as well. So I really like this particular one. Um, Benefac, this is important too. When you're giving antibiotics or when a guinea pig has uh, like soft poopies, you always want to give this a probiotic. So uh, we use it like a half hour before or after you give antibiotics, you put it again a little pea sized amount in the mouth. Or if you're doing it just, you know, um, not necessarily because they, they uh, are taking antibiotics, you can just, you know, support healthy gut movement as well. Hydrogen peroxide, I use that. Specifically like using this one for abscesses. If I flush out an abscess, now an abscess is not a tumor, not a cyst. Those are three very different things. So you wanna make sure that you know the difference before you attempt anything like that. But an abscess is usually you open it and it's all runny and stinky when it bursts open. It's just, ugh, it's, it's really, it smells really bad and you can't mistake it. If you smelled it once, you'll know what it is. So, 50-50 water peroxide, and I, it just does an amazing job with abscesses. I don't usually use it for regular disin, uh, to disinfect. Um, I use the uh, betadine, but this is great for you know any kind of wounds or an abscess. I, lo I love this one. This is the regular shampoo that we use at the rescue. This is our daily shampoo as such. It is an antifungal shampoo. And because guinea pigs are so prone to get the ringworm that we, you know, just always bathe every guinea pig with this just to prevent it as well. So, and it's, this is also part of a, of a treatment, although you can use the head and shoulder shampoo or any head and shoulders kind of shampoo uh, as a treatment. I just like this one. It's a, just a little extra. And cold spray. Cold spray is really good. The cold spray is if yeah, I need to make like a little incision to drain an abscess or something. That's usually what I use it for. And you can have a look at some of the videos I did. I think I have a whole playlist of, um, you know, lumps and stuff. <laughs> yeah, funny. I just love that stuff. I love it. I know some people do as well. So that's what I use it for. Just to uh, make the um, area all numb so that they can't feel the little pinch. And I couldn't find, but I also have, gosh, darn it, my um, scalpel blade, little scalpel that I use. Very sharp, little pointy scalpel that I'll just make a small incision. And I've, I do it here because usually that is where they have those abscesses that need a little help. Um, but again, that is not something that if you have a vet, let your vet do it. Okay, this is not something you want to just be practicing with. Um, but that's always good. If there ever is an emergency and you have to do something yourself, then there you go. Gloves cannot work without them. Absolutely cannot work without my gloves, especially when I'm doing the void cleanings because boo, that, that can get a little stinky. Q tips, need those, love those. And I recommend just using a Q-tip brand as well because all the cheaper ones just honestly don't do the job as well as, 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 the, as, as this one. So we use it for all kinds of stuff, mainly ear cleaning, boy cleaning. That's what we use it for like a lot. The gauze sponge, love this stuff too. This I use a lot if I'm like cleaning some wounds. I'll just dab it into the betadine mixture and just you know, clean it off like that. Um, use it if I'm wrapping up a piggy. Sometimes I'll put the non-stick pad and then maybe some of this over it and then wrap it in the vet wrap. Uh, so this, I use a lot of that. And then I have this trusty tool that I love. And this makes me see really good. <laughs> that looks really strange, it looks weird. But this makes everything so much closer just amazing. I don't even know. What is it called? Magnifying 
head wearing magnifier. That's what it is. So there, I think I went through just about everything. It's quite a bit. I thought this would be a quick video, but I, I don't even know. How, how, where are we at? We're just about 30 minutes. <gasps> oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. That's but great. It's a lot of stuff. Yeah, we should do maybe two parts. I don't think anyone can sit through 30 minutes. So there you go, guys. That's what I use. And it's going to change. You know, in a year from now, I might be adding something or taking something off, and I found something else that works better. So this is always like a work in progress. All right. Well, hope you guys enjoyed. Yeah, I hope this helps. All right, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.